Jason Boudin, I've got uh, about six minutes left. We're getting closer to five minutes, 15 seconds. So uh, uh, I want to ask you three things. Uh, the first uh, would be a, a quick report on your uh, uh, your wonderful time in Venezuela. You showed up and you ended up working in the palace. Yeah, it was a, it was a really kind of a crazy series of events. I was backpacking across the region and I had headed up from Chile over land. I, I showed up in, in Caracas, and my, my first full day in, in Caracas, I ended up doing translation work in the presidential palace. It's a story I describe in detail in the book, um, and I'll encourage people to check it out there. But I, I had a great time in Venezuela, and I fell in love not only with the country and the food and the people, but I was just amazed by the, the rapidly changing politics and, the, and the, uh, the courageous struggle that the Venezuelan people are involved in to try to reinvent democracy, to try to come up with new social policy, to try to alleviate poverty to try to include uh, millions of people that never had a stake in the system in the in the democratic process and so that's that's been a, 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 a you know a key part of my own understanding of Latin America and of pro, you know progressive political movements uh, the world over and I, I write about it in several chapters in the book uh, let me ask you uh, your thoughts uh, on the uh, basically the shift to the left in Latin America uh, from the Kirchners in Argentina to, to Chavez to uh, Bolivia, it's happening. What yeah. do, what's your sense of it? Well, you're right. I mean, there's no question that that has been a, a marked trend over the last 10 years, and that's a trend that I try to describe throughout the book. Uh, you now have over 10 Latin American countries with left-leaning or progressive leaders that would have been impossible to, to imagine as president of their country 10, 15, 20 years ago uh, when the region was just coming out of the lost decade of the 80s and dictatorships and civil wars were still rampant. And now you have, in, as you said, Bolivia, Ecuador, uh, Chile, Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, Brazil, on and on and on. I mean, I could keep going. All these countries have elef elected left leaning leaders with support of broad based social movements. People in many cases came out of a, a history of opposition to the dictatorship. Um, some of them were tortured. Their parents were tortured by the, by the uh, fascist dictatorships. It's just a phenomenal change, and it's one that I document. Um, you know, from the ground up throughout my book. And I try to, I try to uh, give, give voice to the people that are driving that process, the people who are, have found new expressions for, for their own needs and, and, and beliefs. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Obama. He's at Trinidad, Trinidad, Tobago. He just came out of Mexico, uh, talking to a more conservative government there. Uh, he's uh, making slight overtures to Cuba. Uh, what's your sense of Obama, who uh, in his new foreign policy, kind of uh, talking softly, but there he's developing a big stick, uh, where do you see it all going and how what you know those of us who are on the progressive side of things and have supported Obama where do you think that's all going to go and will we be happy well I'm, I'm really excited about the opportunities available uh, right now to the Obama administration and I think he's definitely taken very concrete decisive steps in the right direction and I'm, I'm very optimistic about the the future potential of US Latin American relations uh, I obviously would like to see things move a little faster but uh, I was really excited this morning to see a picture of Chavez and Obama on the front page of the New York Times giving each other a big handshake oh, I didn't uh, see it yet. Yeah, I yeah. save a copy. Yeah, and uh, and also he, him and uh, the president of Bolivia, Evo Morales, giving each other a hug. You know, I think these are you know th these kinds of summits are not the places where hard policy gets made. They're the, they're the places where the tone for diplomatic relations and future cooperation gets determined. And if Obama can can come away from Trinidad having you know said to these leaders, I'm not Bush. I don't stand by his policies. You know, we're going to have a different tone. We're going to respect you. We're going to work on equal terms. We're going to find common ground even when we disagree. Um, and most importantly, I think, a as he did, he said, you know, we're going we're gonna to start bringing Cuba back in and we're going to talk with Cuba and we're going to move towards lifting the embargo. I think, you know, there's three things I'll just say to, to wrap up here. There's just three main issues, I think, that the Obama administration has. Um, you know, major opportunities, and, and I think our job as, as progressives, as organizers, is to make sure we keep the pressure on the Obama administration on these three issues with regard to Latin America. One of them is Cuba, and, and I think there's already really positive change in that direction, but we, it's not just enough to lift travel restrictions on Cubans. We should all be able to travel to Cuba. Uh, we should end the embargo and the blockade on Cuba, um, and I think, you know, they're making decisive steps in that direction, but we'd like to see them move faster. The second thing is that it's high time the, the uh, U.S. government recognized the war on drugs as a costly failure. It has has uh, been a been absolute waste of money and resources and lives, and it's been uh, a defining part of U.S. relations with Latin America since the, the 1970s, and with really very negative repercussions all around. Uh, we could save billions and billions of dollars if we if we redirected uh, our energies in other ways um, in, 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 instead of trying to fight this losing war on, on drugs. And the third thing is immigration. Uh, immigration has always been a defining part of America. It always will be. It's part of our identity. It's part of our culture. It's part of our food. It's part of our language. And 
And uh, right now, our policies that criminalize immigrants, that incarcerate more than 35,000 immigrants on any given day uh, f f without criminal charges um, is, is unconscionable. I think we, we need to recognize the crucial role that immigrants play in this country. We need to uh, recognize the dependence we have on them economically and, and, and welcome them into our country uh, and show them the kind of hospitality that I received on a daily basis when I was backpacking through Latin America. Chase Boudin, it's, uh, it's really great talking to you. Your book is uh, Gringo, A Coming of Age in Latin America, and it's put out by Scribner's. And uh, uh, I recommend it highly, and I'm not a big literary guy of recommending books to people, but this one is really something else. Uh, you're in town to do some uh, book readings, I understand. Yeah, you exactly. Want to tell anybody where they could find you later today or this week? Sure. Tonight I'm actually going up to Ann Arbor to do a book reading there uh, on University of Michigan campus. But uh, Monday I will be doing an event at the University of Chicago uh, Human Rights and Latin America Center around noon. And Monday night I'll be doing an event at 6 p.m. at the Jane Addams Hull House Museum. And I'd, I'd love to have anybody come out and, and join the conversation and, and talk about Latin America, talk about writing, talk about politics. Well, you're clearly a writer. You're clearly a political guy. You're you're in law school. Uh, do you have any pictures in uh, your little vision uh, in your mind about what you want to do and what you want to be? Well, I, I'm not big on uh, committing to any particular plan in the long term. I think the world changes too fast for that. But I sure would love to be in a position to help shape and Im improve U.S. relations with Latin America. Uh, it's great having you on the show. And I hope we get to talk uh, at a slower pace and a little bit longer next time we're together. Uh, you can uh, catch the, this interview with Chase Boudin on www.youtube.com slash heartlandmedia. I imagine it will be up in a week or so. Uh, I want to thank everyone who makes this show possible. I want to thank my co-hosts Katie Hogan and Lisa Smith, our producer Laura Herman. I want to thank our uh, on-site engineers Chris Colgin and Matt Cordenoy, our videographer Evan West, and our in-studio engineer Susan Dunn. Uh, I'm Michael James for all of us at Live from the Heartland. I want to encourage you all to do good in the world because the world needs all the good that you do. Over and out, all power to the people.